Welcome to another edition of Africa Sideways and we're at the Springbok team announcement. Coach Rossi Erasmus of the Springboks and Kanan Moody are the speakers. Let me just run down the team before we get into the conference. At fullback you got Vili LaRue. Fassi is lucky to be out of unlucky to be out of the team because he's been great under the high ball, adds a lot of pace to the back line. A bit of a surprise inclusion, but Vili is the old head, great tactical kicking and calm head at the back, you could say. And then Cannon Moody comes in on right wing. To be honest, I prefer him at outside centre. He's got good speed, but he doesn't have out-and-out burn the opposition speed. But he's, he's a big guy, you know, he's great under the high ball, good in defence, and he can play centre as well, so... No real dramas there. Jesse Creel at 13. He's pretty much played all of the Springbok games of late. He must be one of the fittest guys in the team. Damon Delendi at 12. Hard man. Colby at 11. Kind of picks himself. Pollard at 10. That's an interesting one. Feinberg and Gomazulu on the bench. Six or one half a dozen the other. Uh, Feinberg's been playing quite a bit of rugby, so probably want to give Pollard a run. And they got the gas man at nine, thankfully, Grant Williams. Long overdue a start at, at scrum half. Then we got Jasper Visa, none of the run out. Hopefully the rust is off after last week's performance. Uh, but he had a few good carries in the second half, and he does bring a lot of phys physicality to the side of number eight, Jasper Visa. Then we got Peter Steff to Toy at seven. Uh, one of the best players in the team. Good in the line out, good in the in the in the loose ball carrier, and can do a wee bit of fetching on the side as well. Unusual for such a tall guy. Captain Sio Kalisi is at number six. I've been coming in for a bit of heat for saying that Irbin was the unofficial captain. I'm not taking any of the way thing away from Sia. He's a legend of the game, two time World Cup winning captain, enough said. And then at five, we've got Ruan Nokia, who's slowly establishing himself as a first choice in the South African team. Good, you know, no-nonsense lock. Does a lot of work behind the scenes that people don't see. Four, we've got Eben, kind of picks himself. Three, Franz Mahoba, Bongi at hooker, and Ox in chair at prop, which is good to see. He's getting quite a few starting lineups, which puts us on the front foot in the scrum from the from the beginning. Then uh, replacements, we've got Malcolm Marks, uh, one of the best hookers in the business. Gerard Steenkamp, another blow buller. Vincent Koch, Kwaka Smich, Eldrich Lowe. So they've gone with a 5-3 split on the bench. Eldrich Lowe is a great eighth man coming through the system. Then Jaden Hendrickson, first time we've seen him in quite a while, back from injuries. Sasha Feinberg covering, he can cover fly half centre and fullback, and probably even wing. I mean, I saw him at the training session. He was doing those keep me ups with a rugby ball about 20 times. You can see he's a top level athlete. And Lukanya Um as well. So plenty of cover on the back line. They must be expecting a fast game on Saturday. Let's get into the press conference with Rossi and Kanan Moody. Head coach Rossi Erasmus and Kanan Moody. Uh, please, guys, as usual, we've got 30 minutes. We need to give as many people a, a chance uh, to ask questions. So raise your hands for questions. One question at a time. And then the last 10 minutes or so we'll do Afrikaans. Craig. Morning, Rossi. Morning, Kanan. There's a lot to unpack, Rossi, but let's start with the 5-3. Um, what's the thinking behind it? That this week? Uh, I think sometimes um, there's games where you want to grow our team and sometimes there's games where uh, you desperately want to win. I think trying to win this game uh, would mean a lot in the rugby championships for the last two rounds. And uh, you know, not to say you want your best players on the field, you want your best players in the group possibly. And uh, I think a guy like Salman Murat is very unlucky um, not to be in this team. So to unpack it, uh, the two loose foots on the bench, you know, Peter Steff covers lock fight, lock fight, so we can probably put on the two loose foots some way. We will probably give you almost a 6-2 a split um, momentum, if I say so, because Peter Steff is just a guy who can play 80 and 80 and 80. Uh, and we'll probably some way have to give him a rest. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, obviously, Kirtley is out. Uh, we don't forget the guys like Kane and what they've done for us before. Uh, my pimpy, he's got a, uh, his uh, wife's giving birth, and uh, we don't want to keep him away from that. Uh, so that that's why Canyon is in here, and we, we all know uh, if you've not been long in the setup, then it takes a, it takes a bit to get used to. But 
kind of knows as well. He as a 19-year-old boy coming to the onto the pitch against Australia away and, and had a magnificent game and, and he's really playing well since. I think he's over all his injuries. And yeah, and we feel it's a, it's a game where uh, we definitely will have to match their speed to which they played last week. And we think having three backs on the bench will, will help in that regard. Nathan? Um, I asked Costic uh, uh, last week, does it, push, does it put a push on YouTube and ask him on Tuesday? Um, especially with that situation with Irwin. Then uh, Don this week uh, said we should ask you uh, reasoning behind <laughs> yeah. um, having that uh, select team selection on Thursday. Yeah, the reasoning. thing is, you know, don't always want to upset the media. We thought about um, announcing <laughs> it on, uh, on a Tuesday is, is, is uh, better for everybody, for us as a team, because we announce it 8 o'clock Mondays internally. And then if you don't, if you announce it on Tuesday, we felt all the speculations is uh, out of there, and you know people can write about uh, personal profiles and, and why we pick teams, and give you a little bit more of an angle. And we've got nothing to hide. Uh, um, the Evan case, I really don't understand why people don't understand that. Um, it's, uh, the guy was injured on Monday. He went for X-rays. They said it will probably be a ten-day week thing, uh, and then he just trained on the Monday. And that's the only reason why we did change the team on a Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, um, let's uh, for the specific team. Uh, let's announce it on Thursday. Then hopefully everybody's happy. Uh, and then next week we'll do our Tuesday thing again. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, Rossi, just maybe on Sia and his, on Saturday he looked like he had a fractured cheek. Huh? What exactly is his situation? Yeah, he had two options. Uh, again, I don't want to sound like a medical doctor because I am not. Um, yeah, it's it's he has two options. The one is. Uh, it has to be reset. It's it's a nose fracture in the end. Uh, I don't want to name uh, bones and stuff. Maybe I pronounce it wrong. Uh, but uh, he can either get it uh, placed back now, then he's out for three weeks, or the doc says he can wait two weeks uh, and, and then put it back in place. And obviously, um, the, the, the bigness, the massive thing about this game, and not, not just for the rugby championship, for us playing the All Blacks here. Yeah, uh, at the Cape Town Stadium is, is a big one and everybody wants to play there. I must say, I saw a few sad faces uh, when we announced the team on Monday. Uh, I think Marku must be dis uh, desperately disappointed, not because we would have played in Sia's place, uh, because we didn't go for 6-2. Uh, you know, but the guys are handled it really well. I mean, Kourbis, Mani, uh, all the guys. Uh, uh, Salman, uh, um, I mean, if we win 6-2, uh, someone would have been uh, mixed. Even with 5 3, we fought, thought of a rock and a loose forward. But you have the luxury of, 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 of Peter Steff. And you see, I, I see Zalman playing a lot of test matches for South Africa still. Uh, and I see him as a great captain. Uh, he's really somebody that brings something to the party. It's a calmness about him, uh, it's a precision thing about him, it's a really great work ethic. So uh, we've got a few guys that are unlucky. And just to answer, and I answered the question in a long term, but uh, yeah, Sia, uh, he himself wanted the option to play now and get it reset on in two weeks' time. Steven? Uh, Rassi, can you maybe expand a little bit, please, um, on the halfbacks and um, fullback? Yeah, again, you know, we don't want to, uh, Stephen, forget about guys like Jaden, what he's done for us, you know, of course, said. Great runs for us, you know, he played in the World Cup semi-final, uh, even Mani, I think, was the starting uh, uh, of Pat Perring there, or 9 and 10 there, um, and then in the final we went just with, 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 with uh, um, Faf and, and, and Andre, and we only had one guy on the bench. So, um, and, and we think uh, Grand deserves a start, every time when he comes up he definitely brings speed to the game, uh, but so did us Quibbers. And uh, the temptation was there again to start Jaden, and I have Marnie to have that, uh, you know, that blitz speed uh, when the guys are a little bit tired. Uh, but uh, after thinking, we had a long discussion, after thinking about it, uh, let's see how, how deep into the game he can keep on delivering that before we bring Jaden on. Steven? Oh, this is <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rassi, just uh, how tough has it been um, on Marnie the last few months? I mean, considering this is a guy who went to the, the World Cup as your, your starting <coughs> number 10, and now he's very much you know, out of that pecking order. 
Um, yeah. How's he been the last few months? Uh, do you still see him playing Test match rugby yeah. for you in the future? And the relationship with Sasha and uh, how you see that unfolding at the Stormers? Sorry, quite a big question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, look, what they do at the Stormers is um, it's almost I wouldn't say irrelevant. It's uh, we will never tell a franchise coach where to play a guy. You know, it's his salary, it's his income, it's their livelihood, it's their <laughs> supporters base, it's their franchise that must make money and win. So uh, we totally understand when they make decisions. It's even more interesting, you know, uh, when Damien Willems is fit, it's going to be Sasha, Damien Willems and Marty. Uh, that's three great playmakers that you have in your team. So uh, uh, he's disappointed, but I think three years ago or two years ago, you would have been much more disappointed than you would have shown it. But he's not showing it, and, uh, but he's competitive. All the guys are competitive, but we... We've got the theory that if you want to go to 2027, we must have a squad of 50. Uh, it will prolong a senior player's career. Uh, definitely, if you play him um, a third match or a second test match, and uh, then give him uh, 40 minutes, and then so uh, it's not arrogant at all. But if we want guys to go to the next World Cup who's in their 32s, uh, then they can't play the next four test matches after the next four, uh, three years of test match, all the test matches just for us to win and then they bugger at the World Cup. You know, so Marnie's there. Marnie's probably one of the fittest guys, but the guys that extras on, on Wednesday are, you know, he's very positive, but it must be a thing about it. Mm -hmm. And I see, okay, well, um, just the selection of Vili, you know, Fassi. Um, just, I know you said you speak about unlucky guys. Fassi's another unlucky guy. Yeah, so Fassi was, was brilliant. And I think we asked, asked him specifically to to do well in, in the game and the other things, just do what you do naturally. I mean, uh, I think his defence was rock solid. Uh, I think, you know, his kicking game was good. I think his eyeball game was good. Um, yeah, yeah, again, you know, you've got a guy that's on 97 caps um, playing with Andre. Uh, and I think there's 19 or 18 guys that was at the World Cup uh, in, in, this, in this group. So uh, I don't think we've been unfair on other guys giving them exposure, uh, and so we will keep on doing, you know, uh, and it's nice to do it while you're winning. Uh, the moment you do it while you're losing, it almost looks like a knee-jerk reaction or, or a not planned thing. So we've got a little bit of a plan now, we want to run the next three years, and Foss is definitely part of that plan. Russell, the All Blacks have made a few changes for Saturday. What, what have you made of their team, and how do you think they might play as a result of those changes? Yeah, look, uh, Sevu and... and and to be uh, these guys, uh, I think the first try uh, Sevu scored against us was that cross kick in New Zealand. It's the first guy that I said that coost who stepped uh, at Cheslin and, and uh, after a cross kick from, from uh, Richie. Uh, and yeah, he's just very dangerous. And Talia is the guy, physical, dangerous, legs are pumping all the time. Some of picks and go from the middle of a rock, you know. So who, um, Jerry worked hard on not to stop individuals, but for the guys to know individuals, because uh, if you think you're just going to tackle them, a uh, normal tackle, they'll get away. Uh, yeah, and then the, the loose forward, uh, uh, I thought Caleb Clark anyway was, was fantastic, but he's injured, I think. And then, um, what's his name? Uh, Todd's son? Ethan, Ethan, Ethan. Yeah, I know Todd well. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ethan, he's unfortunately injured, so. Uh, no, they had to make a change there. So I think we made five changes and, and they made five changes. Yeah. Justin? And this one for you. Um, just speaking about that opportunity to once again wear that Springbok jersey. You've endured a tough journey um, with the last injury and that mental toughness to have to work really hard to overcome that and be back here and just talk us through that thing. Yeah, it's really been a tough couple of weeks, months with the, with the injury I had. But yeah, you know, once you're not here, you know, for, you know how special it is to be here, so you're very desperate to get back into it. So, yeah, I think the mental toughness of it, just, you know, want to be, be back here again, so just pushing and doing all you can, you know, playing Curry Cup, you know, try to get match fit and all that. So, yeah, just, yeah, doing everything I can to be back here, and yeah, this week and have an opportunity again. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity and to show what I can do again. Uh, coach, uh, just on the All Blacks again, um, what did you learn about them last week that you didn't know you yeah, I think what the world knows about them is just well, it's a magnificent team and uh, I, maybe I used the wrong words in a post-match conference because it might have sounded a bit uh, but I think they, they, were, they were very unlucky 
and uh, they obviously are not we're not on a high there after the, the loss to Argentina, but then the next game they thrashed him. Uh, and to come over here is like us for daunting going over to Australia. For them coming here, it's fast going to New Zealand is daunting, you know, at, or at Auckland and or, or any of the uh, stadiums there. And at 73 minutes, we were almost down and out. I remember, remember us playing a test match there, we were 38, 29, 15 points out at minute 75. And then they still scored three tries, not just two, three tries. And uh, I think our guys has learned a little bit from that. That uh, the moment you think you have them, you don't have them. Uh, they've got a lot to offer, not just strategically. With the, their scrums are great, their malls are great. Uh, they did certainly uh, matched us at the, the set phases very well. I thought the breakdown was a tight contest. Uh, the kicking game both sides, I think they had 30 kicks and we 27 kicks. Uh, Caleb was good in the air and they were accurate with the kicking game. And then they've got these individual guys who from nothing does something, you know. So it's a very difficult team uh, to coach against, to play against. And uh, uh, their greatness will always be around them just because uh, they've got really special players and coaches. Yeah. Uh, Rossi, um, just, I know that these days you probably, when a guy's not in the team, that doesn't mean he's dropped because no. your policy. Um, I'm just interested in, because I mean, obviously Ben Jason's not there this weekend, I think he's going back to province for this weekend. Um, just how do you think he's tracking? I mean, how did he get, he was quite hard on himself after last week. Yeah, he shouldn't be, and I've told him, we had a chat about that, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's the thing about some test matches, New Zealand and Alice Park is difficult. Uh, they, they, the hype, the crowd, you feel crowd pressure both ways. I'm talking about the spring box. Uh, when you're going well, it feels like they carry you over that trial. And when it's going not well, it's quiet. And, you know, it gets to, to, to some players. Um, uh, but he, look, I think he's going to play a lot of test matches for South Africa. He's definitely in the mix. He's definitely the next seven flanker that we think uh, can do it. Uh, but again, you know, um, we wanted to go for 5-3. And Ulrich really did well when he came on. He had a, had a great impact. And then Jason will probably play next week again. Uh, Rossi, uh, Chesson mentioned yesterday that he felt that past Springbok teams, maybe a few years ago, might not have come back from, from that deficit on Saturday. And that you do work behind the scenes with the players around you know, what, is, what is the plan from here when you are behind. Can you just expand a little bit on that? And have you yourself seen a mindset change in this team? You know, and I think when he says that he included included us as well, because we've we've been ahead or but we've always been a team. I mean New Zealand there it was twelve three once, uh and, and we got back and beat them the first time I think in twenty nineteen or something. Um now New Zealand year we've lost when we were fifteen points up. So uh, I'll think to try and stay on task what what we plan shouldn't be influenced by emotions. Uh, and I think that's a big thing I have to work on. Uh, and we almost didn't get it right on Saturday. But uh, yeah, uh, and if you look at this profile of this team, uh, I think New Zealand's average age was 29 and our average age was 30. So it's two experienced teams. Uh, they had 48 test caps uh, per player and we had 40, 43 last week. I think we pipped in this week with Willie that starts and Andre that starts. Um, but yeah, it's certainly something, uh, we've got a session on Friday, what we call the what if session. Uh, and that's when we do the jersey and over, we don't get like a past celebrities in or people to uh, come and hand over the jerseys. We, we uh, last week it was Tony Brown, you know, for him to coach against the All Blacks. Is, uh, and with all respect, it's, it's exciting and it's nerve wracking. Uh, and when he hands over the jerseys there, you know, he, he would give nothing away. He, he respect. He, he told, us, told us so much about the Haka, and it gives you a totally different uh, respect for the Haka. I'm talking about the players. Uh, he explained that it's it's an honour and what they are doing here. Yeah, it's a challenge, but it's always listen. We are doing the Haka for you as well, uh, and and that not to help you face the Haka and enjoy it, it helps you to understand the Haka and what it means to them. Uh, and then when you take off your tracksuit, there's a different mindset before 
uh, when Tony coach, uh, hasn't coached us because none of our coaches has ever known what the Aka really means for New Zealand. So, and it's not like it's secrets and he's like, giving out game plans of them because it, it's just uh, what it means and the emotional side and, and what we can take from that. So yeah, we, we discussed those things on Fridays when we hand over the jersey. Can you still? Um, Russell, watch one question for you, one question for Kane. Um, first, just brief us how Sia went through training this week with the facial issue, and yeah. are there any misgivings over how he sustained the injury? And for you, Kane, you play your right face of but you're from this part of the world. Just talk us through how excited you are to play Cape Town Stadium, most probably in front of a lot of friends and family. Yeah, you can go on that one. And, and again, uh, when we pick teams, it's. Uh, I'll answer your first question, sorry. Uh, when we pick teams, you know, you try to keep that in mind. And I, I'm thinking about Salman when I talk that. And I'm thinking about Marnie when I say that. You know, you it almost sometimes emotionally throws you to one side. and you uh, But you must unemotionally pick a team and, and, and see what is the best team for this specific game of what you want to achieve. Uh, and again, you know, uh, we. <laughs> It will have still injured. We could have moved Fassi to the wing properly, but uh, and he will manage. Uh, but Kanan was from here, exactly what you're saying, uh, and I think that does make it special. When I played in Bloemfontein for the Cheetahs in Bloemfontein, although it's not the biggest city, but it was, it was a much better, not much better. It was a very warm, uh, emotionally game for you, for, for you personally. So yeah, Kanan, you can say it. Then I'll also answer the CR one afterwards. Yeah, it's very special. Um, yeah, I tried to keep it on the low for, for the week, but now the team's out, so probably going to get some message for tickets. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, so, but no, very special. I mean, yeah, growing up in Cape Town, you know, this, these, these are the games you you uh, thinking about when you're growing up, you know, running in the streets, you know, thinking you're facing the All Blacks. So, yeah, this is just a very, very special opportunity to play this weekend. Yeah, what a better place than Cape Town to do it. And about CIA. Uh, CIA's injury was okay when Sam met him. Uh, I'll never get sorry, I'm, I'm giving a long answer, but I'll try to keep it uh, serious. Uh, he broke his neck uh, against us at Alice Park in a big win. And I went and visited him on the Monday morning because the New Zealand flew back. And I know we, I'll, I've had a jaw break twice in Sydney. I know how lonely it gets in a foreign country alone there. Uh, you don't know how other medical aid work, how good the doctors are and those kind of things. I went to visit him on a Monday. Uh, so we know each other a little bit closer than the normal All Blacks, you know, we had a coffee and stuff with him there in the bed and you could see the guy was going through a tough time because a neck injury is a, probably something that can stop your career or, you know, you can get, you know, that is, uh, a lump, what is that you call that? Um, paralyzed, you're going to get paralyzed, you know. So uh, he was obviously going through some emotional stuff there. And to be honest with you, I don't think he did any of that on purpose. Uh, I think it, a yellow card might have been appropriate or a penalty would, would have been appropriate. But uh, he came afterwards and I said, listen, we're not going to cite. Uh, we're not going to cite you on that because you have 12 hours to cite. And if the citing commissioner obviously pick it up and he thinks it needs a red card uh, threshold, they call it, uh, then they investigate it. But he, he, they went through everything. Uh, and, and that specific one didn't come up as a breaking the red card threshold. So, and, and he came and apologized. And uh, when you look at the action, yes, all of us can go a little bit lower. But I, I don't think he went for Sia's head with his head because it was actually not the shoulder, it was actually the head hitting him on the nose. So, no, sometimes it goes for you and sometimes it goes against him. That poor guy was a red card in the World Cup final. Uh, uh, wouldn't have been nice to get the red card again. And how, and how did Sia get to train this? Oh, Sia, uh, the question was to Sia on Sunday, uh, after they did all the scans. Sia, will you be half-hearted going into contact? You know, because your nose is sore and it's swelled up and the cheekbone is blown out. And, uh, and I s he said, no, well, let's go to Sia now. So that's why we didn't even mon I want to mention it on Tuesday morning, because Sia, I had to get through Monday. Uh, internally, we, we, we announced a team with him starting slash Marco. But then on Monday evening, he did all the contact sessions. Tuesday, he went right through. And today on Thursday, I can tell you, he's, uh, um, he didn't show any... The only problem would have been if he's hesitant. It can't break further. 
uh, it, it has to be uh, put back in place. Uh, so, uh, yeah, much look like Quaha. Rassi, <laughs> 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 um, uh, to Gavin's point, your, your selections are often decided. Yeah, you, you have a very good idea on what the team's going to look like weeks in advance. Um, but last week the attack didn't quite fire. Um, yeah, sort of in first phase play, you know, the tries all came sort of from balls and so on. Is, is Billy's inclusion a reaction to that, or was that always part of the play? Uh, I think Willis calm hit in a big test match here. Um, uh, Andres calm hit in a big, big test match here. Uh, look, Sasha, uh, what Sasha can do is, Sasha reminds me a lot of Carlos Spencer, like 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 Moni does. Uh, he's a very reliable goal kicker, Sasha. Andres is a very reliable goal kicker. Um, and if our attack is not working, we must remember who we're playing against. You know. Uh, it's been working very good up until, yeah, I think we in New Zealand are now on the same amount of tries in tournaments so far. I'm talking on a correction if you can look it up there. Uh, so, defence also makes it tough, you know, for uh, Barrett and Ioni and those guys who play there. Uh, they also know probably a lot about Tony Brown uh, and the way he sees the game. And, and yeah, you know, like, they scored four tries. You know, one was... Oh, what's his name, Damien, giving it to him then. Uh, with Barrett reading it really well, after we did the same move three times in a row. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the mall try was uh, technically this Jasper who hasn't been part of us for a while. I thought he had a really good game. Uh, yeah, and, and the other tries were all organized New Zealand tries, you know, from turnovers are really difficult to defense against. So, but we, uh, we worked really hard on that, and uh, I think Jerry is on top of that. Not to say they won't come here and score four tries, then we'll just have to score five. Uh, Rafi, can you talk about how the players are adapting to the new style of rugby that uh, Tony's bringing to the back line, and, 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 and the, the merits of having Kanan on the wing with his height and the high ball? Yeah, I, I said it a few times, I said it again, uh, Caleb is not playing. Uh, but uh, Sivu is, uh, and, and, and what's his name, is, is pretty solid uh, under the eye ball and then when they get the ball they, they make, uh, you know, they, they cause damage. Um, Felix Jones, is, uh, he laid the foundation there. Felix uh, got in the, hey, he must be able to pass 100 passes before Jim uh, in the morning he wake up. And, and I think he gave a, a baseline product, if I can put it that way, to, to Tony to just work on uh, on mindset and running lines and uh, how to keep your feet a little bit, uh, how to get the pass away a little bit quicker. And I think there were three or four tries. Uh, I think Fashi just played on the inside, you know. Uh, I think the ball quickly kicked through after Sasha Skrotsky kick when he grabbed it. He could have just dived over and, and scored it there, chiseling it one on the other side. Uh, it could have been easily one or two or three tries more for us, but also for them. Uh, so I think it's good to do uh, two good defences uh, that test the attack. So oh, we, we seldom score three tries against the All Blacks, you know, so but that's also not too bad. Um, but as he calls it, he's got a nice way. When Felix was here and Terry was here, you, you catch on to the Irish slang or the Irish twang or what you want to call it. And the way he puts this, you know, is uh, uh, I want to call bullshit that we can't do this. And then he shows us, and oh, then we, we trust him. And, and yeah, that's, yeah, as he put it, he's, he's growing our attack. He wants to grow it, and uh, I think the players are really, really enjoy it. Uh, last two English questions are non and John. Yeah, how much do we know about um, what is the Satiti and uh, the scum of uh, Latimer? Yes, totally maybe given you a bit of insight on them. Yeah, we've got Perry, uh, who's uh, Perry and, and, and Lindsay, who's our analyst. You know, their job is to uh, pull profiles on every single player of the opposition. Um, my job is to follow them on Twitter. <laughs> so, uh, uh, to see what they show, what, what they don't show. Uh, and then the players uh, do their own work. You know. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you ask him that question, you, he'll tell you exactly. Uh, um, so, yes, I know, and I know it's such a big test match for um, New Zealand if those other players that they wanted to pick 
Uh, he knows something about their character and what they can do. Uh, when you see a player, you just see his actions. You don't, don't know how desperate he is and what his big match temperament. Or will he go into his shell in the game? Or will he stay chest out making plans? Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about the individual players there, but they obviously class. Uh, Rusty, sometimes it's hard to back up a big performance after a big win. Yeah. Has there been a big uh, talking point this week after what happened, even at the World Cup after you guys beat France, it was a little bit of a dub. Ireland series, we went at the same level the next week. Has there been a big talking point? Yeah, it is definitely, you're spot on, it's, it's, it's a fact. Uh, but again, you know, you play Ireland number two team in the world, everybody says they must be number one, you drew the series. Um, with a drop goal, in the last minute. Uh, so if you missed it, was the guys up for the game? Yes, we were up for the game. Uh, and we would have won it. So we tried to make the decisions non-emotional and go and break it down to departments and see how we go. Uh, but certainly my thinking and the coaches and the you know, medical team and the SNC team is to some guys when you get to a certain age you feel I am ready for this test match, this next test match. But uh, we all lose hair and we all get grey. You know, you, you, nobody gets faster as they get older. Uh, and, and sometimes that player tells himself, I'm ready. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons why we mix up all the time. To try and see can we get over that hurdle of not backing it up. You know, um, and, and that's one of the reasons why we made five changes. Because we certainly stick with some players uh, and they themselves really think they're up for the game and then in the match the first five minutes they get a shock. Uh, and that's when you get older, you know. Um, I think that's part of the reason. And I've, we've explained it to the players and said, listen, we want to see this now. Uh, uh, it's going to be very tough to beat New Zealand in Cape Town. There's no altitude here. Uh, you know, say they enjoy it here. They, they, they really like to come here. But we love it. And we like to come here. And we play here many times, and I've played here. Um, so yes, I, I, I think we will be up for the game and not uh, get catch up sleeping. You know.